this is lija here in the last video we discussed the different chemical methods of gene transfer now we are moving on to the physical methods the major distinction between physical and chemical transfection is that in physical methods the dna is delivered directly into either the cytoplasm or the nucleus using some kind of physical force without any requirement for interaction with the plasma membrane this avoids the involvement with the endosomal pathway and this limits the amount of damage sustained by the exogenous dna physical transfection methods are efficient for both in vitro and in vivo gene transfer synthetic complexes are not required in physical transfection methods because the gene transfer process involves breaching the cell membrane and introducing the nucleic acid directly into the cell and in some cases directly into the nucleus in simple terms chemical transfection methods trick the cell into taking up dna from the surrounding while physical transfection methods use brute forces rather than trickery to achieve dna transfection there are various physical or mechanical methods like electroporation micro injection particle bombardment sono operation laser induced transfection and so on first one is electroporation it involves the generation of transient nanometer size spores in the cell membrane by exposing cells to a brief pulse of electricity dna enters the cell through these spores and is transported into the nucleus this technique was first applied to animal cells by wong and newman in 1982 who successfully introduced plasmid dna into mouse fibroblast the basis of electroporation is the relatively weak hydrophobic or hydrophilic interactions of the phospholipid bilayer and the ability to spontaneously reassemble after disturbance a quick voltage shock may cause the temporary disruption of areas of the membrane and allows the passage of polar molecules the membrane reseals leaving the cell intact soon afterwards it is efficient highly reproducible suitable for both stable and transient transfection and has the added advantage that transient copy number can be at least partially controlled the standard electroporation procedure is very simple cells are suspended in or flooded with an electroporation buffer and exposed to a brief high voltage electric pulse the magnitude and duration of the pulse determine the transfection efficiency and these conditions must be established empirically for different cell lines many cells are efficiently electroporated using a brief high voltage pulse of about 800 to 1500 volt but others especially primary cells may be killed by such treatments and respond better to a longer lasting pulse of 100 to 300 volt electroporation can be performed in vivo for more efficient gene transfer in a wide range of tissues like skin muscle lung kidney liver artery brain cornea etc in each case dna was injected into the target tissue using a conventional needle and electroporation was achieved through the use of needle electrodes it avoids the vector specific immune responses that are achieved with recombinant viral vectors and these are promising in clinical applications disadvantages of this technique include the requirement for specialized capacitor discharge equipment capable of accurately controlling pulse length and voltage the requirement for larger number of cells and higher dna concentration than used in chemical transfection methods and the rather high level of cell death that accompanies this procedure another in vitro transfection technology based on pore formation which has not become widely used is transfection following laser treatment this involves a similar dna uptake mechanism to electroporation that is free dna is taken up directly from the surrounding medium through transient pores 
created by a finely focused laser beam. This strategy can be applied only to a small number of cells at a time but with optimal DNA concentration can result in stable transfection frequencies of greater than 0.5 percentage. Next is a microinjection method of gene transfer. The direct microinjection of DNA into the cytoplasm or nucleus of cultured cells is sometimes used as a transfection method. Cells to be microinjected are placed in a container. A holding pipette is placed in the field of view of the microscope that sucks and holds a target cell at the tip. The tip of micro pipette is injected through the membrane of the cell to deliver the contents of the needle into the cytoplasm and then the empty needle is taken out. Originally, this technique was used for the transformation of cells that were resistant to any other methods of transfection. Stable transfection efficiencies are extremely high in the order of 20 percentage and very small quantities of DNA are sufficient. And the major advantage of this technique is that direct nuclear delivery is also possible, avoiding the inefficient endogenous pathway for transporting DNA into the nucleus and also ensuring that the DNA is delivered intact. Although many reports describe the use of microinjection in cultured cells, the most significant use of this technique remains in the introduction of DNA into the oocytes, eggs and embryos of animals either for transient expression analysis or to generate transgenic animals. Microinjection is suitable for the interaction of large vectors such as yeast artificial chromosomes into the pronuclear of fertilized mouse eggs. But since DNA delivered in this manner must be very pure, painstaking preparation is necessary to avoid fragmentation. Shearing can also occur in the delivery needle and large DNA fragments are often protected by suspension in a high salt buffer or mixing with polyamines and other protective agents. Although highly efficient at the level of individual cells, this procedure is time consuming and only a small number of cells can be treated. An important improvement in this technique for the transfection of cultured cells was automation with computer controlled micro manipulation and micro injection process as well as the automated production of injection capillaries and the standardization of cell preparation procedures. The development of computer assisted and microprocessor controlled injection systems makes high injection rates feasible and allows for quantitative micro injection with optimal reproducibility. Next is the transfection by particle bombardment method. Particle bombardment that is also called biolistic method or micro projectile transfection method is a relatively recent addition to the range of transfection techniques available to scientists working with animal cells. The gene gun is a device that literally fires DNA into target cells. The biolistic gun employs the principle of conservation of momentum and uses the passage of helium gas through the cylinder with a range of velocities required for optimal transformation of various cell types. It consists of a bombardment chamber which is connected to an outlet for vacuum creation. The bombardment chamber consists of a plastic rupture disc below which macro carrier is loaded with micro carriers. These micro carriers consist of gold or tungsten micro pellets coated with DNA for transformation. The apparatus is placed in laminar flow while working to maintain sterile conditions. The target cells or tissues is placed in the apparatus and a stopping screen is placed between the target cell and the micro carrier assembly. The passage of high pressure helium ruptures the plastic rupture disc propelling the macro carrier and micro carriers. The stopping screen prevents the passage of macro projectiles but allows the DNA coated micro pellets 
to pass through it thereby delivering DNA into the target cells. A major advantage of this method is that DNA can be delivered to deep cells in tissue slices and the depth of penetration can be adjusted by changing the applied force. The size and total mass of the particles and the force of the bombardment are important parameters that balance efficient penetration against cell damage. The technique was developed for the transformation of maize and is now a method of choice for generating transgenic cereal plants. For animal cells, this technique has been less widely used because it is usually simpler to transfect culture cells by alternative well-established methods. However, this technique has found a role in the transfection of whole organs or tissue slices and more recently for the transfer of DNA into surface organs in gene therapy. Particle bombardment is much less efficient than traditional injection for in vivo muscle transfection but has nevertheless allowed the robust expression of several viral and bacterial antigens resulting in a sustained immune response. Next is the transfection by ultrasound. Ultrasound transfection involves the exposure of cells to a rapidly oscillating probe such as the tip of a sonicator. The transfection mechanism is similar in some ways to electroporation in that the application of ultrasound waves to a tissue of cells or a particular tissue results in the formation and collapse of bubbles in the liquid including the cell membrane a process called cavitation the transient appearance of such cavities allows dna to cross the membrane and enter into the cytoplasm it has been shown that application of low frequency ultrasound allows the efficient delivery of nucleic acids into mammalian cells both in vitro and in vivo because the plasmid DNA is left structurally intact. Gene transfer in vivo is generally achieved by injection followed by the application of a focused ultrasound device. Next is bead transfection. Cells can be genetically transformed by rapid agitation with glass beads in the presence of carrier and plasmid DNA. It can be performed without any sophisticated devices and does not require chemical treatments or enzymatic cocktails. This technique is easy, cheap and rivals electroporation for being the least time consuming methodology. But it is also one of the least efficient because high quantities of DNA are damaged in this process and the viability of the cells is drastically reduced. The efficiency of this rapid technique depends on the concentration of DNA in the solution, timing of addition of the DNA, size and condition of the beads and the buffers used. Immunoporation is a recently developed transfection process involving the use of new type of beads, immunofect TM beads, which can be targeted to make holes in a specific type of cells. These are the different physical methods of gene transfer. We will discuss the biological methods of gene transfer in yet another video. Thank you for watching this video. Please share and subscribe.